Hey guys, I just wanted to reach out to you and let you know that Surewinder is still selling amazing products. Some of you guys have been dragging your feet for whatever reason. If your shoulder hurts, do not waste time. Pull the trigger. I just bought uh, four or five of them and uh, we had two guys out. You know how much it cost me to pay for two guys being out with bad shoulders? We just pulled the trigger and we said, listen, everybody's going to have one on a truck. It's mandatory. You got to use it. Don't hesitate. Don't wait till your guys go down. It's going to cost you more. Buy a sure winner. It's not every day someone invents something that changes the game. I found out about this product that I'm talking to you about, uh, and I had to try it. So I ordered a few, and after using it, I'm sold. Now we stock them on our trucks. It's called All Brace and it will help you sell more service and buy you time until doors come in. There's never been a greater time for a product like this. Phil has a video on his website of him cutting a door literally in half, installing the all brace and running it like nothing ever happened. It is literally incredible. One of the greatest selling videos I've ever seen. You're gonna wanna check it out at all-brace.com. Hey guys, what's up Garage Door Nation? This is Ryan with Torch Talk Podcast. Uh, we are going to have a podcast with Josh today, who is going to try his best to put aside his frustrations. So those of you guys who don't know, uh, my general manager, Josh, we've been working together for about two years. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a little over. Known him for a little over three years because I recruited him for like a year. He told me no a bunch of times before eventually coming on board. Whether or not he feels like that was a good decision or not, probably not to be a good day to ask him that. <laughs> but uh, Josh is here with me in studio, and Tisha was supposed to come. Tisha, how are you today? Exactly. It's exactly what I thought. No call, no show. I'm getting no love from the person who's supposed to care about the employees the most. Oh my goodness. Just drag her through the mud. Mm hmm. Uh, now I imagine something serious. Hopefully she's alive because that would feel yeah. really bad if she got in a car accident and died and I'm talking trash. I definitely have to edit it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll edit that part out. Uh, so today I've had some people hit me up about like, what do you look for in a general manager? What does that job look like? How do you balance being the owner operator and then handing over the, the reins to a general manager? how tough that is. Um, and then like, what do you delegate? What do you not delegate? And uh, who do people go to? And I'm not saying we have it all figured out. We definitely don't have it figured out. Uh, we're, we're figuring it out. And, you know, every day is a little bit different. But I thought it would be a good idea for us to have Josh on and have that conversation. So today's focus is going to be, since Tish has totally ditched us, um, bad Tisha. Uh, we're going to talk about what it's like being a general manager. When do you hire one and how do you separate the duties? How do you delegate? So first off, Josh, you can give some background on your, ex excuse me, your experience prior to coming on at Aaron overhead doors. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, just kind of worked my way up through the chains and the, uh, commercial side of things. I started as a helper at 14, 15 years old, learning how to stack in sectional doors, worked my way up, realized that is not what I wanted to do forever. Mm -hmm. um, even though the 15 years I did it felt like forever. Uh, yeah, I, I, I really focused on just observing the people that I saw doing it right. Um, and I also, what I like to, I even tell my kids this, is observe the people doing it wrong too. Yeah. Learn, let them, <laughs> learn from them, let them screw up. Um, but then I worked up, got into bigger and bigger companies, which is good and bad. I'm not hating on anybody that hates the big companies. I'm that completely see it from both sides. Um, then I started, got into the new construction thing um, for a company and just really clicked well with running a job site very, very efficiently um, from pre-planning to running it to post-planning. And that is, I learned you'd, you break your back a little less doing that. So I was like, this is, this is nice. And you got to travel, which is good and bad when you got a family at home. Um, hmm. But just, we won't go into all the good. <laughs> yeah. <I'm just> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so when you uh, when you really focus on that, that was when I was able to really start tapping into the leadership qualities. Um, and I did that for a while, and that's actually when you started hearing about me. Um, yeah. So I was like, well, if my name's out there, it's it's uh, I'm doing the right thing, and it's not out there for a bad thing. Yeah, I so I had a commercial manager who um, knew a lot, but was like extremely old school. Uh, we butted heads a good bit, and we had two totally different visions of what the department should look like. And uh, I'll take full responsibility for that. However, um, we he did lead me on to Brent and Josh because he had worked with them in the past and told me that, you know, I was always recruiting people. So he was like, you need to try to recruit these guys. They're, they're two of the best in the area. And um, they definitely can help us take the department to the next level. So that was exciting. Um, he was my, at the time, my general, my, sorry, my service, uh, my commercial manager was getting a little bit on the older side. And I kept talking to him about, Hey man, we gotta, we gotta build a plan. We gotta work towards getting you out of the field. And, uh, he was very stubborn and didn't want to get out of the field, but at the same time was always coming in like moaning and in pain. So, you know, we were looking for people who we could bring in and do that. And that's kind of where the conversation started with us was how do we, you know, how do we bring you in at what position and, and all of that. And you were already higher than what we were looking for at a position. So I quickly realized that that wasn't a good fit. Um, so when, when myself and my commercial manager decided kind of mutually that it wasn't a good fit because we were, had different visions for what we were trying to accomplish. Um, I had offered you the commercial manager position mm -hmm. and, uh, that was the second no, uh, <laughs> that I got. And, and it was smart on his part, right? I mean, that's a, you're in a very secure position here. I am, uh, what four, five, five years in business and four, four and a half, five years, somewhere on there. And, um, you know, we were meeting for dinners, mm -hmm. talking long conversations, uh, well past my bedtime, <laughs> which, um, I think he would get me to drink and hang out with me long past my bedtime to see if he'd get any information out of me that I normally <laughs> wouldn't volunteer. Um, but it was good. And I think that leads us to like, what qualities do you look for in a general manager and when do you look for one? And I'll, I'll kind of give my input on that and then hand it over to you uh, for your, for your opinion. But honestly, I believe every owner should start working their way out of almost every position in the business. And it's extremely difficult, especially when you started like I did. And like most of you guys did, you're in the field, you're doing doors or service or sales. And then, you know, you get to the point where you really can't grow unless you make a decision to bring on somebody and then you bring on somebody else. And then it gets to the point where it's unmanageable. And so you have new people that you like, you know, you have people that you may have hired in the beginning that you outgrow uh, or the growth is uncomfortable for them. And then you hire new people who are encouraging and uh, you know, and I'm a big culture guy and I was not happy with my culture in the beginning because hell, I was just trying to find people that I could trust to go out and install doors. Culture was kind of like, if we can make culture happen, that's cool, <laughs> but we got to make money happen too. Right. Yeah. So we were, we were just in a couple positions where our, I was getting frustrated because I'm a visionary. I had been pushing really hard for like five years trying to grow my company and being a big visionary in a garage for three hours, you know, do, you know, doing one job and then another job. And then, you know, it's six, seven o'clock and you're on your way home and you really haven't done anything to accomplish growing your company mm -hmm. and you're exhausted. You, you get to the point where you can't do it anymore. Like, and that was where I was at. And I probably seem desperate to you. I don't know. That's why you were such a good negotiator. But I really was to the point where I was just like, look, I either got to grow this thing or shut it down because I don't want to do this anymore. And I felt stuck a little bit. 
And so I knew I needed somebody to come in and help me with structure and organization and accountability. Accountability was a big part of it too. And I told you even, you know, I was like, Hey, look, this is going to be a two way road. Like I'm going to hold you accountable. You hold me accountable. Like if I tell you I'm going to do something and I'm not doing it, you come sit in my office and be like, bro, you said this and you're not doing it. Yeah. And I'm, am I pretty good about letting you do that? I mean, if I yeah, say you're, you're better at letting me do it than me doing it. <laughs> well, you, <laughs> yeah, you can, you can come to me. Yeah. But the, the thing is, is that I think the number one quality that I was looking for was heart mm-hmm. and work ethic. I wanted somebody who cared about our people like I care about our people and someone who look deeper than just like money makers. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, so the number one quality that I was looking for in a general manager, because this person was going to be interacting with our people every single day was heart. Like, mm-hmm. does he care? Not just about the business, but about the people that every day, like individually, not as collectively. And after meeting him, like the first time I was like, dude, this guy's genuine. He's authentic. He's not going to pretend to be something he's not. He's down to earth. Um, You know, I felt like there were some areas that we could mature and grow on, which you've done a freaking phenomenal job of. Um, I wanted somebody who was hungry enough to learn on their own as well as allow me to, um, like, put you through programs like Journey and stupid shit like that that just, you know, (laughs) may annoy you. But I think it makes it – Anytime you're, even if the content of journey was elementary or stuff that you already knew, it put focus on it. Mm -hmm. And the growth that I saw from you from the beginning of, and journey is like a leader, nine month leadership program through a college. And, um, that I just, uh, I think just having you focus on leadership every week doing that, uh, I saw a lot of growth in you as a leader, which is good. Um, our people really respect him because he does care. And I think that comes first. So what I'm looking for in a general manager is heart, compassion, empathy, which we're still working on a little bit. <laughs> and then like work ethic, because if you have those two, um, I think the rest just kind of like falls into place yeah. and you just kind of like, smooth some of the edges and off you go. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't like the smoothest transition coming in because you got here and you're like, holy cow, there's so much to do. Talk a little bit about what it was like when you came in and don't make it sound too horrible. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> well, damn. Uh, no. Um, it was, it was a, a, a definitely a challenge uh, with the business being smaller one of our biggest focuses for me was the commercial department, getting it off the ground at the same time, kind of watching the residential side. But at, it was still at a minimum then because you were pretty active there and we were a little smaller. So I think we had two two trucks in the field and resi, so that wasn't that bad. Um, didn't have much to work with on the commercial side of things, so it was a, almost a fresh build, um, which was fun. I love building things, whether they're yeah. tangible or not. So that was... Uh, that part's been fun, not been easy by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it was one of those things where, and I do this with a lot of things, I tell myself, just just keep at it, it'll pay off, just keep at it, it'll pay off. And uh, we still got a long ways to go now. Yeah. But knowing how, what was kind of handed to me two years ago, two and a half years ago, yeah, I think we're doing okay. We're killing it. <laughs> yeah. Dude, like, I can't even... and. And I'm not a bragger, right? And I'm not trying to brag. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I guess what's the word? I'm trying to, I'm giving you the credit and because I don't really do much, to be <laughs> honest with you. Um, you've killed it, bro. Like when you talk about a commercial department that was bare, like barely making it, struggling in a lot of areas well it wasn't even really a department i mean we had a department and then we didn't have an apartment <laughs> yeah and then you kind of like made it another department 
and then seeing where we went from there to like no people in the department to now like uh, we got four people in the department, five, six, six people in the department, yeah. six people in the department, and it's doing really well. Uh, it's been one of the, it's been the fastest growing segment of our business by far over the last year. Yeah, and the team is small but mighty, and you know uh, we're not perfect. We decided we we really struggled finding qualified people who fit our culture and had the level of skill that we wanted. Yeah. Even when we were willing to pay big money to get them, there was always a reason why for whatever reason we couldn't get them. Yeah. And that was frustrating for me because I'm like, dude, we got to have experienced people in the field. And so I finally got frustrated and I was like, Hey, let's just change gears. The sooner we like just accept the situation, the faster we can mm-hmm. move on. And that was, well, let's just hire good quality people who work hard, have good attitudes and fit our culture. And then let's train them. Yeah. And we hired three people for that position. Mm-hmm. And all three, we, well, we moved one over from residential mm-hmm. and then we hired two more from outside the company. All three are still with us. And all three are having fun, doing a good job, learning. Yep. One of them's working on his master certification. The other two, uh, does Michael L have his certification yet? Uh, I believe he has his rolling steel or okay. his sectional. One of the two. So you got uh, all three have certifications, and one of them's working on master certification. And you know we're doing everything from high speed to sheet doors. Yeah. And those guys are, I mean, killing it. We had a project where you know. We're seeing sometimes we're seeing the hours on jobs go down and then sometimes we're <laughs> seeing them go more than they should. So, I mean, there's some, there's definitely some issues we got to figure out there, but um, we're, we're having a lot of success and I owe yeah. a lot of that to you taking, taking basically something that was going backward a little bit and turning it around, which is probably one of the most difficult things you could ever do. I'd rather start something from scratch then take something yeah. where the momentum is going the opposite way. So great job on that. Uh, we talk a lot about, and this is uh, something that's been on my mind a lot lately is we talk a lot about how many people can you proactively manage and the difference between like managing and proactive managing. Like I think the idea of a lot of managers is I'm here for you. Call me if you need me. Mm-hmm. And you know, um, they're doing manager stuff. I don't yeah. even know what that is. But, <laughs> um, proactive managing, which is what you and I kind of more or less believe in, is where you're actively seeking them out, uh, trying to teach them things and understand what they're going through personally and, and at work. And then, um, you know, just getting to know them individually. That's very difficult to do when you have a team our size now. Yeah. Um, so we kind of break those up. And and I've always preached that it's really hard to do proactive management with any more than six people. So you're managing a lot more than that uh, at the moment. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about some of the ways that you um, – help people like in committed to culture. I watched the last episode. Did you get a chance to watch it? Yeah. Okay. So we haven't, we haven't rolled it out yet. We, we're going through edits and trying to finalize, but um, it was really cool seeing how people speak about our company when you and I aren't around. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, they'll come to us and tell us how grateful they are and they love it here yeah. or whatever, but like to actually get content, like other than the, just the compliment is really cool to hear some of the things. Yeah. And one thing that I saw that, well, at least I felt like was kind of flowed through the, the show was um, we kind of treat them as individuals mm-hmm. and we care about them individually. So what are some of the ways that you feel like you successfully make them feel that way or we successfully make them feel that way as a company? I know one thing I, I just, it was more forcibly to get myself to do this, but now it's a little bit more natural. I, I'll just if I realize I haven't seen that person in a while coming through the office or whatever, I literally just ask them about their weekend 
and we we see most of the guys every morning. And you really start to learn these people. Yeah, I can see the way they look at the ground more, or mm-hmm. they walk slower coming across the warehouse. Something's up, and just putting aside whatever's going on, and just while they're out there loading up the truck, going and asking them. Just I'll come up to them, I'll give them a hug, whatever, stand beside them, crack a joke, whatever, and then just legit ask them, "Hey, something's up." I don't even give them a chance to say, "No, I'm good." Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, all right. So what is it? What's bothering you? Is it me? Is it home? You want to talk about it? You want me to walk away? What do you want? And more than nine times out of ten, it leads to us laughing. Dude, this is just bothering me. It's cool, though. It's not you. And then all they wanted to do was just vent about it. And we're in a male-dominant industry, yeah. and us as males are really bad about talking about what's bothering us. We're, we're almost bred to put that shit aside and move on. Yeah. And uh, so for guys – shit some of them 10 15 18 years older than i am to sit there and just let it all out and then text me after they leave go bro that was huge thanks like i'm gonna have an awesome day thanks for letting me just vent and that is a huge win to me like that makes me feel so damn good and at first i wasn't like that i was like coming from commercial construction it was suck that shit up move on yeah i don't care if you're throw it up, go get it out of your system and grab that wrench and get back at it. So that's been a big transition for me. And now that I'm reaping the rewards from it, it was, I wish I would have been like that years ago. Yeah. So, um, but just giving them the light of day that doesn't have to do with work. Like just, just not always when you get in, in a lot of companies with bad cultures or, or bad leaders, I can tell you from experience, when you see the the highest rank boss or whatever come walking out of the office, you're like, oh, shit, get in the truck, get in the truck. Let's yeah. just get out of here. This can't be a good conversation. <laughs> yeah. Why is he even out here in the warehouse? So our guys aren't like that. They'll come seek conversations with yeah. us and stuff like that. They'll, um, And I know there's there's different views on this, but I think we're friends with most of, most of them on Facebook. So, yeah. And I know some people don't agree with that, and that's fine. Uh, but like the guys will come in, Hey dude, I saw you were out at the range with, with your son or Ryan, I saw you're fishing with Asher, dude. I want to do that so bad. Yeah. And it just kicks off those conversations. And do we have to still have the, the nitty gritty type conversations? Absolutely. But we don't always put the personal ones aside to have those because if you don't have a balance of those, these guys are like, man, I'm just here to make these guys a dollar and I better not mess up. Yeah. And, uh, just, yeah, I mean that was a long way of saying just to get them know them, get to know them personally. I think that's great. Yeah. There's one thing that, and I'm probably gonna step on some toes here, but I um, I notice a lot in the garage door industry, in the blue collar or male dominated industries. There's a lot of um, I'm gonna use a term that's probably not used very often, but what we call court jesting, and. I'm gonna tr- let me look up the definition of court jesting so that I can explain it a little bit better. So the way it was explained to me was it's based on insecurity. Men, men historically are very insecure people. Mm-hmm. And anytime we feel like we have more experience than someone else, we have a tendency to cover up our insecurities by downplaying them. So, for instance, you have a 15-year vet and you got a new guy come in. They'll give him a hard time because they feel like he's got to earn some sort of status in order to be an equal or whatever. And so uh, one of my leaders, my pastor, you know, we we had a long conversation about court jesting. And, um, you know, there was at the church, we would always kind of like pick at each other or whatever. And he was like, hey, I'd like to change this. And in our church. And I was like, yeah, man, I agree. Like, this is a good idea. And then I really started to see the shift, right? Because when you strip that away from guys, what else do we have to talk about? (laughs) Yeah. Right. It's like, Hey, how are you? Consistency in everything, including price, reliability, quality, not just quality, but great quality control. These are things that describe Somer USA. 
Somer's not some startup company, not one that you need to be worried about going out of business in the near future. Somer's a two, Somer and their family of businesses are $200 million companies. They're in over 100 countries, and they have locations in 20 countries. This is a large organization who stands behind their product and works through integrity. And there's not another company out there willing to drop what they're doing and help you out like Somer. These guys are awesome. Not only have they been loyal to the Torsion Talk podcast, they've been loyal to the technicians and the owners of the companies who install their product. In my opinion, if you're not at least offering Somer as an additional option, you're cheating yourself. Listen, first-time dealers, I've got a special for you. If you buy 10 or more Somers between now and the end of the season six, while supplies last, we will offer you free shipping. You have no more excuses. The prices are great. The product is amazing. Go check out Somer USA and order 10 for free shipping. I'm going to tell you guys a marketing secret. You want to gain more social media likes, shares, and follows? People love unique and cool projects. There are no better photos to share than the ones on Schweiss Doors social accounts. These guys post some incredible things. Make sure to go there and like and share their Facebook and Instagram post with your business account. So if you like their business account, you can share their uh, their post. The bifold doors are awesome, and they're doing some great projects that will go viral on social media if you share them. Go right now to Schweiss Door on Facebook and check out some of the projects they share and like their page. Oh, and don't forget, no one builds a better bifold than Schweiss. I saw you went fishing this weekend. Yep. How'd it go? And the conversations are different, right? We resort to more, like, um, instead of having artificial conversation, banter, we go straight into intellectual conversation, which is more complicated, more difficult for men to do. Mm-hmm. And um, because it feels vulnerable, we try to hide that part, and we try not to let that out. That's been something that I've worked on my entire career as a leader. I got thrown in management at 19 years old and I was the youngest person in my department and they gave me a really hard time. Like it was, you know, I mean, if I told you what they called me, these are the people that reported to me. I mean, you'd be shocked, right? I mean, but it was a car dealership. And here I am 19 and I'm managing a team of people that are in some cases twice my age. And, um, it was very difficult. So I, I had, I didn't have a choice, but to be humble, you know, and try to win them over. And so that put me in a position where I felt like as a leader, this is the right path. Like this is, this is the way to do it. Like, trying not to create that atmosphere of banter and uh, court jesting back and forth because you never really have a good relationship. And honestly, if you ever talk to the younger group coming in that are dealing with that, if you pull them aside and have a real conversation with them, that'll be one of the first things they complain about. Yeah. Almost every single time they'll be like, yeah, I mean, I like working here, but it just sucks dude, because everybody's giving me a hard time all the time. And, you know, we talk about keeping employees and all of that. And so I would encourage every business out there, if you're having trouble keeping people, there might be a reason. Yeah. Your veterans may be, you know, giving your new guys a hard time. Or maybe it's you or one of your other managers. And that's why I say, like, you know, squash that quick because that is, that is a path to destruction when it comes to company culture. And, you know, then, then you're never really having any real conversations. It's all superficial. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and there's a, yeah. Cause if they come in and then, and a lot of people go, oh, well they, they took something higher paying or they did. Yeah. A lot of times there is not every time, but a lot of times there's an, another underlying thing Yeah, where if they were that close to the edge, you need to back up and kind of look at everything else. Don't look at it. 
yeah, I lost my best guy because somebody else offered him four more dollars an hour. And that might not be. Most likely is not the reason why you lost your head guy. Yeah. Let's talk about we do one-on-ones. Mm-hmm. And Which I'm slacking at. Yeah, they haven't been on my calendar, so I need to probably check. I've been a warehouse guy for the last month. So. Yeah, so our <laughs> warehouse guy put in his notice. By the way, I had a really good conversation with a lady today. I'm totally off topic and probably doesn't need to be on the podcast, but I'm really excited because we've been trying to fill another position and uh, had a really promising, promising candidate. Um, super excited. So Tamara's trying to get that on your schedule as quickly as possible. Nice. Um. So since we lost our warehouse guy, Josh has been a general manager, interim warehouse guy, which I genuinely think he freaking loves, just to be <laughs> honest with you. He may act like he doesn't, but he, I've never seen him more happy than when he's in the warehouse, like straightening <laughs> and cleaning. He, Josh is probably on the verge of having a little OCD when it comes to organization and the warehouse is, um, you know, for me, if you're a salesperson, like you'll get the brunt of my wrath if you're not doing a good job, which doesn't come out very often on any other position for whatever <laughs> reason, but that's just who I am. I, I guess like whatever we were when we were younger, like those are the people yeah. who are like, they're our kids. Yeah. And then like whoever's running our warehouse, boy, you better be on your freaking game, dude. Because yeah, Josh is like, he'll go back there and be like, dude, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. How come this isn't done yet? If I keep telling you just to go sweep the parking lot, just <laughs> yeah. know you're probably on the way out. <laughs> yeah. If this is the third time today that I've had to mention the parking lot, just pack your stuff. Yeah. Um, so, what is it about the warehouse that gets you like so excited? It's where everything starts and I work so much happier, whatever I do. And I hope everybody's like this is if everything's done efficiently where I can't, I cannot stand just disorder in anything. And that is like mentally trying to get somebody on your page and all that. Yeah. That's a battle. But that just physically being able to see something that is not being ran efficient, I can't stand it. And I feel like it just always starts there. So I'm a startup guy. I'm a builder. I can take something from a piece of dust and grow it into multi-million dollars. I believe I can apply my methods to just about anything. Mm -hmm. However, once we get to a certain point, like the wheels will start wobbling because I'm going so fast that it's like – whatever y'all just hang on and keep up. Yeah. So that was kind of where we were at when, when you came on board, we had slowed a little bit cause I was like declining in energy, <laughs> but what we, when, when I am not in a good head space or I feel like I'm a little bit overwhelmed or overworked, I tend to become completely disorganized. Like I leave mm-hmm. stuff everywhere. Um, things will just get cluttered. And I know that drives you like you've even gone to my office and yes. cleaned up before, which I think is crazy. <laughs> um, and then I have times where I'm like, Oh my God, I gotta take a deep breath. <sighs> you know, whoops, like rub your, you know, earlobes or whatever. And then I look around, I'm like, Holy cow, this place is a disaster. Like, yeah. and it'll be that way in my truck. It'll be that way at the house. <laughs> it'll be that way in my office. And then I spend like a full day just organizing mm-hmm planning notes and then I'm in a good head space. Yeah. But it's like, sometimes you just got to head down, grind it out, get a bunch of stuff done. Boom, 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 boom. I don't have time for all that, which in reality, like if I would have just spent two seconds more, (laughs) but it's really like a trigger in my brain. Like I've learned that it's, I don't know why or what, but I, I, I just get to a point where I'll work all the way up to or past the point where I'm supposed to be doing something else and I transition or leave and I'll leave that mess there. Mm -hmm. And then it's like that for like a week or two or three or four. (laughs) And then I wake up and I'm like, Oh wow. I didn't realize how trashy it was. Um, how is it for you? You can be honest. How is it for you being a little bit OCD working with someone like me, who's a little bit like off the reservation sometimes and disorganized. Um, You've helped me like tremendously, by the way, like structure and organization, like forcing me into SOPs and all this stuff, because that's not like my strength. 
how has it been for you getting me on the same page with you? And this will be good for general managers out there to learn how to get the crazy boss man like on the same page. With somebody that's been so set in their ways for so many years, mm-hmm. it was really just showing you how much better it was. Like from the warehouse to my office to SOPs, whatever. They're like, dude, everything's going crazy. What should we do? I don't know. We're going to pull out this little folder with our SOP. Oh, right there. Step three. <laughs> We're going to do that. <laughs> so, I mean, like when I came into the podcast room a few months ago and you had organized the shelf, like I think I might have cried a little bit. Like, yeah. I was like, no. oh my God. Dude, you have no idea. We've had wires and things strode everywhere for so long, but nobody ever comes into the podcast studio really. So I've just kind of been like, eh, whatever. I thought about like taking you to dinner and getting a cake and everything. Like <laughs> Celebrating. It was, it was a big deal. It was the death uh, of an old me. Yeah. So I, I, I had, um, I ordered a cabinet and put everything in bins and organized it by like category. And yeah, I enjoy doing that. It's just, eh. The part that I've learned is if you, like it took you what an hour no that was like freaking three hours oh wow okay (laughs) (laughs) it was a lot so three hours even more to my point is so you discovered okay this is a freaking issue yeah it took you three hours to come back from it whereas now that the warehouse is efficient as it is and stays so organized when a clope truck backs up we're like oh shit 15 doors some other parts oh my god I, I don't panic. It in 30, 45 minutes, everything's put away in its spot because everything has a spot. It's yeah. already there. So I've just learned where just keeping the OCD mentality going, just make things so much. And have I gotten better? Oh yeah. I have. Yeah. Good. By staying out of the office. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> By working over at L, which is my marketing agency. He's basically saying that, no, I haven't gotten better. He's just not experiencing it. AOD is cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> no. I do have the tendency to like leave my mugs and my cups everywhere. Oh, me and Brie know. Bottles of water. Yeah. Everywhere. We take I turns washing your dishes. <laughs> I don't use dishes. Well. Coffee cups. I use the same coffee cup every day and I wash it every day by myself. That, that's what's gotten better. Yeah. So, so you have I'm gotten get, better. I'm getting better. Now, yeah. I did just go put it in the sink, but I've, I'm not doing it because I'm expecting somebody else to clean it. Like. Tomorrow, when I use it, you'll clean it. I'll rinse it it out and use it and then just put it back in there. (laughs) I don't know why I didn't just finish washing it and then stick it on the thing with everything else. But anyway, listen, uh, anything that you want to tell a new general manager or two questions business owners, what advice would you give a business owner who's interested in hiring a general manager? I feel like out the out, out the gate, when you go out there to say you're just going to go walk down a line full of people and you're going to start looking for that guy or girl, you're automatically thinking, I'm going to find this all-star that thinks like me and we're going to blow this thing apart. Don't do that. Don't do not do Hire your weaknesses exactly. is what Exactly. So if yeah. you go out and just find somebody exactly like you, you'll never discover what you missed when you were building this thing or even if you're in the early stages. So... I agree with that. Yeah, me and you have enough differences that it works out perfect. We love people the same. Yeah. We run things different. Yeah. So. Yeah, because you can't say, you can't go hire the guy that literally is almost 100% like you. Yeah. And then say, hey, if I do anything that you don't like. total chaos. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And then tell them, hey, if there's anything, hold me accountable. I want to hold you accountable. Yeah. What would you ever say to each other? Because you're both identical people. So yeah. you have to have that, that person that says, Hey dude, let's try it this way. My so. advice would be hire, hire somebody with a good heart who genuinely cares about people because that'll make a difference. And then hire somebody who's not a yes man. Yeah. Like, as I just said, yes, you're not. <laughs> yeah. You're not a yes man. Yeah. Like there's people that I feel like, Anytime I come up with an idea, they're going to be like, oh, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, is it really, though? Because you just said that. Yeah. Like, now I'm doubting myself. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah. So I, I I really like people who challenge me, even though sometimes I'll get irritated by it. I'll be like, oh, my God, quit freaking challenging everything I say. But then when I walk away, I'm like, they have a point. 
Yeah. And you, you know? can do that. Like when you go to dinner with them to meet them for the first time, tell them, hey, I'm going to, here's what my plan is. Here's what I've got. And you start throwing it out. What do you think of that? Nine times out of 10, they go, oh, I think all of that is great. Let's do it. Yeah. Pro- maybe that's not the best person for that yeah. moment. Um, and you don't want them to kill it all either. There's well, got to yeah. be like a happy medium. And how they deliver that is important too. Yeah. So what would you give it? Uh, let's say you're in the door industry and you want to be a general manager. You're not a general manager right now, but you have the desires of moving into a general manager role and managing people and kind of running the thing. What would you, what advice would you give someone who's maybe in the field now or whatever and hoping to become a general manager one day? One of the biggest things that I see that those guys out there are thinking is, do I really want that because of the responsibility? Um, I look at it as it's slightly harder. Not Okay, so when you're in the field, you're just worried about yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay, you might have a guys working beside you or whatever, but it, it's a big mentality to just be like, all right, I was given this door to install today. I'm going to do it the best to my ability, and I'm moving on. So it is a big difference. So maybe even start thinking, observing the ones you have. Hopefully they're good examples. If not, you got to pick that apart too. Um, I think that's where a lot of mine came from is learning from the bad ones. Um, and watching how those current general managers affected the guys around me. I said, okay, don't do that. Put yeah. that on the list of do it this way instead. <laughs> and um, That should be a book. We should write a book. Yeah, don't do it that way. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah. Or um, learn from the bad manager or something like yeah. that. Like, that's how I learned. That was, yeah, that's, that was something that I realized helped me with not even leadership, just other things growing up where I was like, like I'd have friends that made really dumb freaking decisions, but I was had just enough self control to not do it too. Yeah. Sometimes, and so I was able to go. Okay, he's in it landing in the hospital now because he wanted to go do something stupid. I'm sitting here just checking on him yeah. because I didn't do it. So, just uh, so if you're still in the field, maybe start implementing the qualities of a general manager. What you hear, what I mean, hell, I still still watch YouTube videos on, I mean, I'll watch YouTube videos while I'm driving to work, but I'm listening mm-hmm. to YouTube videos I'm driving to work of just leaders, how they think, what they do. Mindset. Yeah. And start, you don't have to wait till you're a general manager to have that mindset. Yeah. And list doers and list makers, right? Yeah. And there's a big difference and you can be a list doer. You got to be a good list doer. I think in order to know how to be a good list maker. Yeah. But I genuinely like my, my answer to that question is like similar to yours proactively start taking that role now, Mm -hmm. right? Help the younger guys, encourage them. You know, if you finish up a door early, check to see if there's anybody in the field that's struggling that might need help. Uh, Come back to the shop and ask, you know, peek your head in and ask the the current general manager or owner, is there anything you need help with? Like if, if you were pushing for a management position, and you were constantly coming to me like, hey, and I felt like you were competent enough to do whatever, I'll delegate to you. And eventually, I may even weed you out of the field and yep. put you in that role just because you're actively showing interest in doing it. Yeah, that's so, exactly what I did. I, w- I would go to my old VP and go, hey, if I knock this job out and I'm back by two, I know you work on your P&Ls on Wednesdays. Can I come in and just observe? Is that cool? Yeah. Did, at first, he was like... Uh, sure I guess and then when he started realizing like hey hey, Josh you want to come in on Fridays and help me knock some of this shit out so I'm like yeah, yeah. No, you don't got to pay me any extra for that I know what I'm getting for that and one thing that I was always told that I took way too literal for years was dress for the job you want not the job you have I took that as physically so maybe I came to work a little too <laughs> nicely dressed to be installing dock levelers but um, but mentally dress for the job you want yeah. not the job you have so it's good you know you can be a leader you can be a role model and a leader in the field so and I, and I think that's what helped me out a lot was being on these construction sites with five six seven eight guys underneath me and they're they're just reporting to me John, what do you want done today what are we supposed to do today yeah I was, that's when i started the whole all right i can see when somebody's having a bad day things i started thinking like it then yeah um if you wait until somebody for some reason gives you the chance to give you the role to start acting like it 
you have a rough start. Yeah, it's too late. Yeah. Yeah. And blessing whoever the guy that gave you the job <laughs> was if you didn't even show any qualities until now. But um, yeah, just live it now. Don't wait till you have the title on paper. So good. What a nugget. Little nugget for you guys. Uh, all right. That's about 40 minutes and trying to keep these short with my team members. But wow, I feel like there's so much information in this that's super helpful. I'm really excited about this podcast. And uh, Josh, thank you for taking time out. I already knew today wasn't like the best day for you to do this. Um, and uh, I appreciate you putting aside all the frustrated emotions and um, being transparent and honest with me here. Yeah. So uh, guys, thank you so much for, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you uh, like and subscribe and um, reach out. If you got any comments for Josh, you can leave them in the comments of, of the post on Torsion of Talk podcast. Uh, I know he likes feedback and um, he does a phenomenal job for me and he could probably give some advice. So if you leave questions or anything, feel free to do that and I'll point them in your direction and have them answer the questions. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Be safe and enjoy. See you next week.